rich magma out along the perimeter of this collapsing roof block. Once the eruption started, all hell would have broken loose. This magma erupted explosively towards the surface, generating enormous ash clouds and generated pyroclastic flows. Which are very destructive and hot avalanches of gas, ash, and rock. And of course, they destroy everything in their path. The mayhem would have continued for days. very high eruption columns. These eruption columns would have reached tens of miles into the atmosphere. The eruption plume sent billions of tons of ash around the globe, some of which eventually ended up in John Westgate's lab 75,000 years later. That, for me, was the Eureka moment when we had brought all this chemistry together, Combine it with the dating, and it all gave this coherent story of one massive eruption 75,000 years ago from Toba. But still one mystery remains. In this tropical landscape of jungles and lake, where is the supervolcano today? It's hiding in plain sight. Lake Toba is the massive scar the volcano left behind. And the lake water is thousands of years of rain. This eruption created this crater, this enormous crater that we're sitting in. This island here actually slid down off the walls of the crater during the eruption. Now we know that Lake Toba is the site of one of the largest volcanic eruptions ever to occur on Earth. The discovery of the Toba supervolcano raises another question. How did the eruption impact life on Earth? When Toba erupted 75,000 years ago, the Earth was abundant with animal life, but only sparsely populated by our human ancestors. Recent fossil evidence suggests that Homo sapiens had already started the migration from Africa, reaching Asia 80,000 years ago, well before the Toba eruption. The cataclysm would have annihilated virtually all life, human, animal, and plant, within a wide radius. Death from breathing in volcanic ash would have been excruciating. Well, if you're close enough to the volcanic eruption, and in a super eruption that can mean thousands of miles away, if you breathe in the ash in an unprotected way, you're breathing in tiny little glass needles and uh, they get into your lungs. They um, cause the blood vessels in your lungs to pop. There's moisture in your lungs. The ash combines with the moisture to make a kind of a cement. You basically choke to death. Ultimately, the most catastrophic effects of the volcanic ash and gases may have been on the planet's climate. The key culprit would have been sulfur. Sulfur can reach very high altitudes. In the atmosphere, it combines with water to make sulfuric acid, which is a liquid, which forms tiny little droplets. And it's that mist of dropped sulfuric acid that present the veil that cuts out the sunlight, that scatters the sunlight back to space, that keeps the sunlight from getting to the surface of the planet to warm the surface of the planet. This sulfuric acid cloud blanketed the eruption site, then quickly spread over large areas of the globe. Particles in the cloud scattered sunlight, 
causing the sky to appear blindingly bright, but blocking the warming rays of the sun. Since the climate was already in a cooling phase, it's possible that Toba jump-started the Earth into a prolonged freeze. But based on our, our present information, Toba had a role, a major role, in causing a thousand-year climate cooling and created a, a mini ice age that lasted at least a thousand years, perhaps longer. Rampino has shown that the biggest historic eruptions cooled the planet over many months or even years, a phenomenon he calls volcanic winter. So how much more would an ancient super eruption cool the planet? To find out, NASA climatologist Drew Schindel created a computer model based on scaled up data from smaller historical eruptions. In our simulations, the planet definitely cools in response to this super eruption. The cooling is larger than you'd expect just from having the eruption itself. This exponential cooling has a surprising cause. Snow. We think Toba could have pushed the planet towards an ice age because the model was able to increase the area covered by snow. So that makes the planet brighter, more reflection, and then even after the volcanic material has fallen out from the atmosphere, the brighter surface can allow the cooling to continue. The reflective surface literally had a snowballing effect. The more snow, the more the reflection, the more the temperature dropped, causing even more snow and ice. Glaciers advanced, and the temperature of the oceans fell. Ocean surface temperatures started to cool. And by doing that, you're looking at a major part of our entire climate system, considering that the ocean covers 75% of the Earth's surface. This has a major impact on our climate. The tiny ocean creatures called foraminifera are proof of a global disaster 75,000 years ago. In Greenland, over the millennia, snow compacted into ice more than a mile deep to form the Greenland ice sheet. The 75,000-year-old snow sees the light of day for a second time when drilled up by Zelensky and his team. Vegetation withered and died. The food chain was disrupted, and animals and humans starved to death. The Earth continued to freeze until a new climatic cycle swung it out of its mini ice age into a warmer phase. The supervolcano that caused all this is ancient history. But could it happen again? Today, Lake Toba is the picture of serenity. Craig Chesner continues his study of the lake and its supervolcanic origins. But now, his investigation is taking on a new urgency. For below the calm waters of Lake Toba lies a ticking time bomb. We're standing here in the western shore of Lake Toba in this area of white rock. And the reason it's this color is because there are corrosive gases permeating through the rock, hot fluids coming out of the rock, making this stream here. And they're incredibly hot. I can barely keep my hand in there. It's about 80 degrees Celsius. This tells us that magma is not too far beneath us at this particular location that definitely demonstrates that Toba is an active volcanic system. There's magma beneath the surface and a good chance that there will be volcanic activity in the future. Toba appears to be on a roughly 400,000 year cycle. So an eruption is not likely in our lifetime. But the activity in its magma chamber and those of other known supervolcanoes 
indicate the threat is real. 